Welcome back to Plus Politics and to our next issue. The Bayesta State Gubernatorial Petition Tribunal has nullified the election of Governor Doye Diri of Bayesta State. This decision was based on a petition by the Advanced Na Nigerian Democratic Party, ANDP, which argued that it was unlawfully excluded from participating in the election. The NDP had earlier approached the tribunal seeking the nullification of the November 19, 2019 governorship election. The tribunal ruling can, however, be challenged at the appeal court. Joining us to throw more light on this is still Liberos Oshoma, a legal practitioner who still remains with us. Good evening, Liberos Oshoma. Yeah, good evening, Kayode. We have Emmanuel Appa, who is a public affairs analyst who joins us right from Yanogwa in Bayelsa State. Good evening, Mr. Appa. Yeah, good evening. Thank you for having me here. Let me, let me start with you, since we have uh, heard the liberal's voice for some time now. What is the mood like in okay. Bayelsa State? Come again. What is the mood like with this Come judgment? Again. Yes. What is the mood in Bayelsa? The mood. Oh, the mood. It's I am nothing too serious, you know. Um, first and foremost, this is a court of first instance, so uh, a lot of persons are looking towards appeals and all that. Uh, everything is calm. People are going about their normal business, uh, even though one or two persons thought it was uh, a final judgment and uh, uh, misinterpreted the position of the level of the tribunal, but generally, Everything is normal. People are, are going about their normal business. Okay, and uh, let me quickly take it to liberals. Liberals, uh, for the laymen, they're probably uh, a bit confused. A few days ago, we understand the tribunal upheld the election of the sitting governor. And a few days after, we also understand that the same tribunal has, uh, you know, nullified the election. Can you just throw more light on this? Yeah, um, after every election, you know there are there are many contestants in the election. So everybody, you know, um, that feels the need for challenging such election would approach the uh, election petition tribunal uh, with um, grounds to challenge such election. And, and so all of those cases are taken on their merit. They are not, um, they are individual cases from different parties and individuals, and so they, they are not consolidated. And so the dismissal of one case on its merit does also not mean the dismissals of another case. You know, the facts are usually very different. So in the case that was um, dismissed on Saturday was a different matter altogether, even though against the same election. And, and so for this one, it's a different, there are different parties you know, they are saying that they were wrongfully excluded. And we all know it's a general rule. It sweeps across board. Uh, once a party is uh, wrongfully excluded in an election, uh, the Supreme Court had heard that uh, what it means is that that election didn't take place. But this one is a very interesting one on Jermaine, and uh, we we'll expect to see what the Court of Appeal will say, you know, in the matter. And so what basically happened is that there is another case that the God court had given judgment on this thing from the one that they gave on Saturday. That's it. It's just like you contest an election, you win the, the election, uh, and then uh, you have three political parties. They both challenge your election. And so these three people, you have APC, for example, ADP, AZP, or uh, PDP, challenging, let's say, the election of or the victory of a Labour Party, for example. So the court can give judgment on Saturday in PDP's case against Labour Party. On Sunday, give judgment against, in the case of APC against Labour. On Monday, give judgment in the case of uh, Zenith Party against the Labour. Just like that. So that's what is happening. Okay. And, and so all of those cases will be treated differently depending on the facts of such Yes. Okay. You know, so the former one was challenging the outcome of the election. Why this one is challenging the fact that they were not included in the ballots. Okay. I, I will also look at some other issues that were also highlighted in that judgment. But let me quickly get uh, Emmanuel's opinion on this. Uh, um, 
a lot of people were saying that uh, APC might just be one of the beneficiaries of this judgment. And hence, if there's going to be re-election, as we speak, because the appeal is yet to, to take place, if there's going to be re-election, do you think APC stand a chance to come in? I know liberals is itching no. to say something on that, but let me no, get no, Emmanuel's no. view no, no. first. Uh, liberals in a hurry to speak. He's a lawyer, yeah, but I, I, I don't think they have a chance. <laughs> okay. Their matter, was, their matter is different. They, they, they were not party to the election in the first place. And um, the Supreme Court has ruled that they were not party. So no other ruling can change their status. They are gone, they are gone. They are gone, they are gone. Okay, liberals, explain <laughs> yes. more. Yes, uh, I completely agree with uh, um, what Emmanuel has said. Uh, by the judgment of Supreme Court of the Supreme Court in um, APC's case, uh, the in, the intent of that judgment is that a APC uh, did not participate in the election because they were not qualified to participate in that election, and and so if there's going to be a rerun in that election, the time for substituting candidates is over, so hmm. APC cannot come in now to substitute because they were not a candidate in the election that was decided uh, that somebody was excluded. Even if they were, you now say, the court had said, look, you do not have the requisite qualification, which is the same thing that the court is saying in this matter, even though in another language, to say, INEC, INEC on its own said, the candidate did not meet the requirement for the constitutional requirement for contesting. And the court said, you ought to have come to us. It is not in you to decide on your own to say he didn't meet the requirement. You ought to have approached the court. A candidate, somebody else ought to have approached the court to ask the court to disqualify that candidate from contesting. And which was the same thing that happened in the APC case. You know, a candidate approached the court and said, these people are not qualified by virtue of the fact that the deputy governorship candidate, you know, is an unknown person. And, and so the court so upheld. So in this case, if there's going to be a rerun, the candidate that was not part of the election cannot be benefiting suddenly. If that is the position of the law. Liberals. But also quickly, okay. quickly, on this issue of um, uh, uh, disqualification or, or exclusion, I think, this is my opinion though, I think that the court, is my opinion on the judgment of the court, I think that the court ought to have looked at the issues distinctly, whether INEC disqualified the candidate or INEC refused to register the candidate. Because the issue here is that of qualification, constitutional provision. And so if the candidate, the the requirement for contesting is that you must be 35 years. And INEC, being an administrative body, says you submit an application and you are not up to 35 years. Does INEC have administrative power to refuse that application? I still believe that they do, even though the law says they do not have such powers. Because if the law says that the political party has a right to take administrative steps to disqualify a candidate. The umpire that is to register such a, a, a candidate also should have administrative power to refuse registration. And then that is an administrative step that will be now subject to a review by the court. But in this case, what we are saying now by this judgment is that if a lunatic, a certified lunatic, approach INEC, is feeded by his political party, INEC does not have a right to refuse the, the registration of that lunatic. It is only the court that can determine. That is what the court is saying here. And that's why I think it's a very interesting jurisprudential question that the Court of Appeal would determine. We'll I, 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 wait to I, I, see I want to stay goes. with you. I want to stay with you. Uh, since you are the lawyer here, yeah. I'll come back to you, Manuel. I, I was going to ask that question. I think you started touching some of these issues. Looking at the judicial precedence, this will cause. Because someone would say that Reinek is being careful not to have a case, for example, of this ANDP man. And he knows this man was not up to 35 based on their verification. And this man gets to win. 
And at the end of the day, they will say, no, this election was not duly conducted and we have money being spent again. So uh, is there a prospect for, 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 the, for the sitting governor to look at this issue again? That's why for me, the word, the words should be not disqualification, but refusal to register. It's a semantic. Because INEC by virtue of Section 31 of the Electoral Act does not have power to disqualify. The court had said that. But does INEC have the power to refuse to register? Because if mm. patently the candidate has not met the required constitutional provisions as laid down for qualifying to run for that office, does INEC have the power to refuse registration? That's where the issue is. And I think the court also didn't take cognizance of that fact. What the court basically is doing now is to whittle down the powers of INEC, which I think it's unnecessary. Because at the end of the day, it just makes an INEC, INEC, um, a, 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 what do you call it? A, condi a pipe. A pipe. A rubber you know, stamp. You just take the process through, conduct mm -hmm. the election, and you, you do not have a say. I next should have administrative powers to determine, to refuse registration if the right, the uh, 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 constitutional provision has not been met. Also, take for example, if by this judgment, if we are to follow it strict to census, what it means is that if you have five forms to fill, as a candidate, and you feel just two, INEC does not have the power to refuse registration, even though you have not met the requirement for contesting for the election. And so that's why. And then another uh, German constitutional issue was the fact that the election was conducted in November. The election was conducted in November. Judgment was delivered in August. By virtue of the provisions of the Constitution, judgment ought to have been delivered in May. It is sacrosanct. It's a constitutional provision. So having this delivered judgment outside the constitutional provision does that not mean that the court was sitting without jurisdiction. But uh, then, of uh, course, you will ask, that, that, was, uh, that, did, he, uh, 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 um, did he occasion a, mis a miscarriage of justice? That will be the next question. So and it's that, definitely going to be an interesting time. It's going to be. Um, at the court of and I, can, <laughs> I don't want to accuse you of uh, already providing points for, <laughs> for the, <laughs> for no, the we're appellant. Just, we're just looking at the legal issue. <laughs> uh, um, basically, <laughs> I, I was going to say that uh, probably uh, one of the things they might be looking at is maybe COVID has some kind of delay in the sitting process of the tribunal. But I will allow you to respond to that to, to COVID, clean it up. But before you go. Why COVID was going on. Uh, let, let me let me talk to Emmanuel. Uh, Emmanuel, uh, since you're not a yeah. lawyer, and uh, we should also put it on record that we are also in touch with INEC to have their interpretation on this issue, because immediately all the papers are filed, we may not be able to talk about this issue. So we are also in touch with INEC to get how, because they need to also learn their lessons if truly they erred in law according to what the tribunal has said. But okay. back to you, Emmanuel. Uh, um, um, I'm saying that um, I, this question also looks like it's something the liberals will also handle. Uh, do we have the politician finding a way of still coming back if a party says, oh, our candidate is no longer eligible, there can be some kind of substitution? I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the major opposition here because the story of Dwoya Diri is laced with a whole lot of uh, controversy. Remember how it came in? And now we are having a series of judgments. Emmanuel, are you there? It, what is APC saying as we speak in Bayelsa concerning this issue? Okay. Um, I, think, I think the network is bad. Okay. Yes. Okay. Let me have your Can take. Did you hear me? All right. So I want to just uh, lay, lay, make some clarity on the issue of controversy. Um, I wouldn't want to call it controversy to the extent that um, the, the Supreme Court took a decision that was right at the time they made that decision. And uh, beyond that, every other person has a right to go to court to challenge uh, the outcome of the elections, which they did, two other parties did, first they APC appeals the ruling of the Supreme Court and the 
Timi Alaibe. So it's not much of a controversy. It's just that uh, um, Doye Duri. Uh, Okay, um, the network has failed again. Um, Liberals, our time is fast spent. Let me quickly have your final take on, without giving some legal Are points me? for the appellants. Okay, so do you tell us just add this case, this issues of cases and cases and cases? I mean, uh, it's, it's uh, not out of place. It's okay, but the most important thing is um, the judiciary is up to the tax of doing the writing, like our learned guest here has pointed out, a lot of flaws in this uh, immediate judgment okay. of the, the tribunal judgment of today. Okay. But um, appeal is going on already. The, the lawyers are preparing their appeal. Okay, thank you so much. As for appeal, uh, uh, liberals, I believe uh, strongly that uh, the okay. judiciary will look at its, its merits and uh, uh, turn the case okay. again. So you is, is, is a man that the court has been favoring legally and uh, objectively. Thank you so much, so, Emmanuel uh, Appa, a public uh, affairs analyst, and thank you for your intervention. Liberals, I'm just told that my time is up, but since I promised you, maybe 10 seconds, please. Yeah, for me, it's, um, it's, it's interesting. Um, so this is court of first instance. So I, I just would wait to see or hear what the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court will say on this. Okay. But I think that it is high time we also begin to look at our electoral laws, you know, to accommodate, you know, issues that um, ordinarily picture. would throw spanner in the works. Thank you so much, Liberal Sushuma, for your intervention on this issue. And to our viewers, I'm sorry we will not be able to take my take today, but tomorrow is another day where we'll come in with another interesting conversation on PLUS politics. Till then... Stay tuned for a repeat episode of this particular conversation at 3 p.m. tomorrow, where you will have opportunity of watching the conversation again. Till then, I remain truly Coyote Lade in the same bye for now.